Okay, let's look at this question next. Again, back to Ali and his three friends at the cafe with 10 dishes. How many orders are there? Okay, so how, um, how many different orders that they can uh, produce with four people and 10 dishes? Now, um, there could be multiple answers to this question depending on how you understand what an order is. And an appropriate question at this point is from whose perspective? Because that will define what an order is. Let me clarify this further. Let's think this from Ali and Frank's perspective. What is an order? An order from their perspective is Ali orders a dish. Friend one orders a dish. Friend number two orders a dish and friend number three orders a dish. So Ali has um, 10 choices here. Friend number one has again 10 choices because there is no rule forbidding them to have the same dish in the question. And friend number two again has 10 choices and friend number three has 10 choices. Now, do we have order here? The question is, what happens if I switched, for instance, these two? I would get a different order because let's say Ali orders dish number four and friend one orders dish number six. And the waiter, let's say, confuses them and puts dish number six in front of Ali and dish number four in front of friend one. Now that's incorrect. You have to rectify that. Therefore, here we care about the order. Therefore, the answer is, 10 to power four in this case. If you look at this problem from the perspective of uh, Ali and friends, the answer would be 10 to power four because you care about the order. On the other hand, now consider the same problem from the cook's perspective, okay? Now let's suppose Ali orders dish number one Friend one orders dish number two, friend two orders dish number three, and friend three orders dish number two. Now at the table, again, if the waiter brings dish number two in front of Ali, dish number one in front of friend one, dish number two in front of friend two, and dish number three in front of friend three, that would be incorrect. But now we are not looking at that perspective. We are looking from the perspective of the cook at the kitchen because all he cares about is from which dish should I prepare how many. And in this scenario, it's one dish one, one dish three, and two dish two. That's the only information the cook needs because he doesn't care about which dish goes in front of which person. That's the waiter's job. The cook's job is prepare one plate of dish one, two plates of dish two, and one plate of dish three. So that's the only information um, the, the cook requires. And therefore, from the cook's perspective, the number of different dishes, sorry, the number of different orders is now different because suppose another scenario where Ali orders dish number two, friend number one orders dish number three, and friend two orders dish number two, and friend three orders dish number one. All right, from, from the Ali and friend's perspective, this is a totally different order, but from the cook's perspective, it's exactly the same order because he's going to do the exact same thing. He's going to prepare one plate of dish one, two plates of dish two, and one plate of dish three. So that's the exact same order. And therefore, the question is, how can we find the number of uh, different orders from the cook's perspective? Now, up to this point, what we had done was actually figure out the number of choices that uh, each person can make here. Now we are going to take a different approach. Let me again erase these. We are going to look at this from the cook's perspective and the cook cares about from which dish should I prepare how many. So dish one, 
dish number two, dish number three, dot, 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 dish number 10. And there will be, since there are four people, there will be four orders. And these four orders are going to be distributed into these categories. The dishes now describe categories. So dish number one, one selection here. Dish number two, two selections here in our previous scenario. And dish number three, again, one selection. Okay, so this entirely describes um, the scenario from the, pers the perspective of the cook, because he doesn't care um, dish one goes to which customer, dish two, the two plates of dish two goes to which two customers, and dish three goes to which customer. We don't care about that now. All we care about is from which category, um, how many selections do we make? Okay, so to find, uh, to find the number of uh, these selections, um, we are going to apply what we call the stars and bars approach. Now you see we have in this example question, 10 categories defined by 10 dishes, and we'll come up with a representation for each different order. Um, instead of these containers, I'm going to use separators namely the bars that separate each category. And I'm going to distribute four stars, which will represent the items or the selections we make um, into these categories. So if I put in one star here and a bar here, and then two stars, and then a bar, and then one star. So that is dish number one, dish number two, dish number three, Okay, so here at this point, uh, I should have dish number four, but there is no selections for dish number four. Therefore, I do not put a, another star here. I just directly put the bar, the separator between dish four and dish five. The same goes with dish five, no selections. So put the bar here and no selections from six, put the bar here and seven, eight, nine, and 10. I don't have a separator here because that's the end already. I don't need to separate it. Therefore, you see, I have 10 categories that gives me nine bars, nine separators. And I have how many? Four selections corresponding to the four customers. Okay, so this entire, let me erase this. This representation entirely describes the order of one dish one, two dish twos, and one dish three, okay? Suppose that we order um, two dish fours, uh, one dish five, and one dish nine. In that case, the representation would be, okay, so the leftmost um, position is for dish number one, but I don't have any dish one orders, so that will be empty. And similarly, I don't have dish number two, dish number three. From dish number four, I have two. So I'm going to put two stars here and the separator between dish four and dish five. So from dish five, I have another one, put it here and separate it. Now I'm at dish number six. I don't have any dish number six selection. So continue to seven. Okay, eight and nine here, and the separator between nine and 10. So this describes, this representation describes this order. Again, here we do not care um, which plate goes in front of which customer. We are only interested in from which category I have how many. Therefore, the stars and bars notation or representation entirely describes each of these different orders from the cook's perspective. And you see, um, in this scenario, since I have 10 categories stemming from the 10 dishes, uh, I have exactly nine bars, nine separators. And since there are four customers, they are going to make four choices. I have exactly four stars in every representation only the order will change. 
if I switch um, a star with another star, it's the same order. But if I swap one separator with a star, that will give me a different order. For instance, if I swap these two, what I will get is star and then bar and then three stars and then bar and then seven bars, okay? This still has nine bars and four stars, but you see it's now a different order. What does it have? One plate of dish one plus dish uh, three plates of dish number three. So dish number two. You see now this is a different order. This one had one plate of dish one, two plates of dish two, and one plate of dish three. But this one here now doesn't have um, dish three. Okay, so if you switch um, any star with a bar, you have a different order. But if you switch um, bars among them or stars among them, it doesn't make a difference, right? Therefore, what we need to find is how many orderings are there for nine bars and four stars, okay? So that makes a total of nine plus four, 13 things. And out of those 13, I will have to select four of them to make into stars and the remaining nine is going to be bars. So that will be nine plus four, choose four, or alternatively, that would be equal to nine plus four, choose nine. You can either select four things to make into stars, or you can select nine things to make into bars because that's the exact same thing, but whatever remains is going to be stars, okay? So if we generalize this, this is sampling with replacement without order. Now we do not care about the order of the uh, selections, but we do have replacement because uh, for instance, if you think back to the example, a dish can be ordered by multiple people. So we have reuse of selections. So this is the scenario, choose K items out of a population of N. Okay, so you'll make K selections um, and the number of categories is N with possible repetition. So this is K items distributed into N categories. And this is in general, the problem of counting multisets. A multiset is essentially a set where um, elements can be repeated. And um, sin, um, when you're studying multisets, you can define uh, the number of multisets uh, that can be defined on a set. And this is given by what we call the multiset coefficients. And as we have just seen, um, that corresponds to k plus n minus one choose k because you see if you have n categories that will give you n minus one bars and k stars as given here so that would lead to k plus n minus one choose k or k plus n minus one choose n minus one selections so this is the general formula and sometimes you can see this notation to represent multi-set coefficients.